Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 54th ever episode of the Best Phone Plans podcast. If it looks different, we're coming at you live from the Best Phone Plans HQ, aka my living room. Uh, we've got a great show planned out for you today. We're touching on some quick news items, what's happening in the wireless space, like AT&T's performance, Visible's new free trial, and a T-Mobile insider discount you don't want to miss. And we've got an exciting main topic for today, Verizon's new plans, as well as updates on the C-band deployment. Before we get into it, Dennis, how are you doing today? How are you enjoying Colorado? Stetson, you know I'm doing great as always, and how can I not be enjoying the lovely state of Colorado when I have one of the best hosts a man could ever ask for? This man cooks, he keeps the house clean, and he gets me from point A to point B. If any man was upset with that, then there's something wrong. Yeah, and we actually had a great start to the day, and maybe we can start the podcast with this uh, T-Mobile offering an insider discount. So what did we do, Dennis? We went to the T-Mobile store, and were you able to get it? Yeah, I woke up extra early, ironically enough. We went to the T-Mobile store, and thanks to one of our awesome viewers, which you know who you are when you hear this, I was able to take advantage of that T-Mobile Insider discount. What's, what is the discount? It is 20% off your bill for existing Magenta Max customers or new Magenta Max customers. And let me tell you, that discount's going to be the reason why I probably never switch from T-Mobile. That's amazing. 20% off your bill for life. Uh, really appreciate T-Mobile doing that. Um, Speaking of things that are free or discounted, how is that for a segue? Visible is offering a 15-day free trial right now. And if you go to Visible's website, there's a banner at the top. It's only for iPhone customers right now, and you need to activate it via eSIM. Um, but basically, you scan a QR code, you activate a trial plan. It's 15 days. And to the best of my knowledge, it's truly, it's the visible experience, unlimited data, unlimited texting, unlimited hotspot at five megabits per second, um, and all of that. I think it's a welcome th I think it's a welcome thing to see, and I hope more MVNOs do it, just like how Mint brought it about, which yeah, is awesome. I think Visible's one of three. We've got Mint Mobile doing a free trial. We now have Visible and T Mobile is doing their free trial with their thirty gig hotspot plan. Very true. And staying on this gravy train of good news. As the uh, quote-unquote AT&T fanboy by you guys, uh, I want to talk about how AT&T had Blue. a super strong quarter, 880,000 postpaid phone net ads, and 1.3 million total postpaid ads, and they got 270,000 new fiber net ads. Talk about a great quarter, and... Yeah, just a great thing from AT&T, but unfortunately not everything is looking up in telecom. Do you want to touch what's going on with Dish? Yeah, so uh, Dish, Boost, we're out there. We're rooting for you. We want to see you rise up to be that fourth carrier. Uh, but some sad news, they've been losing subs, Dennis. Uh, no surprise here. They went from offering truly unlimited plans to, of course, having to cap out at 35 gigs. They're down 121,000 subscribers, quarter three, 2021, down 201,000 subscribers, Q2 2021 and down 212,000 subscribers Q3 2020 and they have some of the highest churn in the industry at 4.61%. But in brighter news, we are seeing a slight change up in leadership. Uh Dish Wireless just appointed John uh Swergna. Uh sorry if I butchered the pronunciation of that name. We did try earlier on, but This is actually our second take and I read it the first time and was like, I don't know how to pronounce that, John. But so, he's the now president and COO of Dish Wireless and will be leading the entire wireless business, including the 5G network and retail operations. So excited to see what he can do. Uh, we're rooting for you, Dish. We're looking forward to it. But uh, I know you got some good news that's coming about from one of your favorite MBNOs that you like to talk about on the show. Yeah, I like uh, I like to talk about Red Pocket. They, they have very affordable options on AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile. Uh, honestly, they're, I think some of the best on AT&T, very affordable, and they have annual pricing that gives you tons of data at a great value. They are working on eSIM. This came as a Reddit post. A Red Pocket customer received an email from Red Pocket saying that uh, they're going to be launching eSIM technologies vaguely sometime in 2022. So uh, we'll see when that happens. No date officially. And well, in the meantime, if you don't want to use eSIM, Samsung came in quietly and finally made the Galaxy S21 FE edition a reality with, that's right, two dual physical SIM for the U.S. model. Let's give a round of applause to Samsung. Woo! 
everyone cheers the crowd goes wild also s22 is just coming around the bend yeah yeah good upcoming news i think that's it that's the quick news segment that's what's happening in the wireless space this week ces is going on if you're interested in tech you consider following that and uh seeing what comes out but dennis as you like to say on to the meat and potatoes the main dish the main serving of this podcast Verizon's new plans and C-band. Well, let's just start right out the gate by talking about C-band. It's been all over the news, literally made its way to mainstream media like CNN and other cable networks. What's going on, Stetson? Give the give the audience here a short synopsis of this whole escapade. This is what you need to know. C-band is new frequencies that are coming out on the telecom networks, and they are approaching a similar frequency used by the FAA for altimeters in older airplanes. There is a 200 megahertz guard band in place, which should be enough, but the FAA expressed concern. Verizon and AT&T willingly delayed their rollout of their C-band uh, spectrum to work with the FAA on this. Thankfully, finally, C-band is here. The carriers are officially turning it on on January 19th. Verizon says they will cover 100 million people uh, with their C-band coverage. And there's actually a great list that uh, Sasha had from PC Mag that details all 50 cities getting C-band. Uh, tons of great ones here. New York, New York, Los Angeles, California, Chicago, Illinois, San Francisco. And I think, honestly, there's so many. The ones that are not getting it is almost more interesting. The ones missing out are going to be Baltimore, Washington, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and unfortunately for me, Denver, Colorado. Uh, so we are currently delayed and have an anticipated launch of around December 2023. But everyone else is greenlit and should be getting it on January 19th. Yeah, so Stetson, what do you got to do to actually get access to Ultra Wide? And I, do I got to buy something extra? What do we got to do here? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Great question, Dennis. So if you're an existing uh, Verizon customer, you're going to be getting access to Ultra Wideband uh, as long as your current plan is access to Ultra Wideband. Uh, and you need a compatible phone. What does that mean? That's going to be an iPhone 12 or iPhone 13 or newer. Uh, when the iPhone 14 comes out this year, for example, the Galaxy S21 or newer, including the new S22 coming out next month. And Pixel 6 will be getting a software update to support C-Band, uh, hopefully in the next coming months. Samsung also needs a software update, I believe. They also need a software update. But... Um, but there's more good news on that front. You don't have to be a Verizon Postpaid customer. There is three MBNOs that we are aware of that actually will also have access, and they are Xfinity Mobile, US Mobile, and Visible. We'll all get access to the glorious C-Band. Oh, it should be awesome, yeah. Uh, one thing to note, Visible does cap their 5G speeds at 200 megabits per second, but US Mobile and Xfinity Mobile should be getting full speed on C-Band and it should, it should be glorious. So January 19th is the day to expect that to happen. If you've got a compatible, uh, right now it sounds like iPhone should be getting it first and then hopefully the other phones very, iPhone very soon. iPhone has it enabled already. Uh, Android just needs software updates specifically with the Google Pixel that Pete talked about when yep. we were in bar. But uh, all right, let's talk about the new plans though because that is something I feel like it hasn't been covered too much uh, considering Everything yeah. else has been in the news, so. It was kind of funny, Des. Like, Verizon launched C-Band, and they decided this was the opportunity to update their plans. But is it really an update? And I think, what was the big question you had for people? Well, the big question I want to have for everybody that's watching going into this is, should you upgrade or should you switch to these new plans? And hopefully this discussion will help bring we're, an answer We're going to answer you. that for you. Yeah, 100%. But I think it's funny. Like, Verizon had these new plans. Not a whole lot changed. I think I'll just go right into it. The three big changes. Big change number one, the plan names. Verizon added a 5G at the start of all of the plan names. It's now 5G Start Unlimited, 5G Play More Unlimited, 5G Do More Unlimited, and 5G Get More Unlimited. Change number two is with the hotspot data. And there's going to be a huge asterisk here that we'll talk about in a little bit uh, that kind of changes things a lot in our opinion. But hotspot increased from 15 gigs to 25 gigs on the play more and the do more plans. And the get more plan went from 30 gigs to 50 gigs of high speed hotspot data. Change number three are the perks. Uh, these have shuffled around, honestly, even as the plans have existed. Discovery Plus is gone. In is a new 50% off discount on Verizon's 5G or LTE home internet options uh, as well. 
as a $30 off Fios gigabit plan. Uh, if you're a Fios customer, you don't want the home internet option. Um, and finally, I guess the fourth change, I, I would call this kind of a perk as well, but the do more and get more plans are getting one free travel pass day per month, and you can accumulate up to 12 of these. The travel passes are good for basically one year after they're issued, so you can get up to 12, and that means when you travel abroad, you get half a gig of high-speed data before you're capped at two uh, G speeds while abroad. So overall, I think um, there were some changes that were made. They seem pretty good, and I guess the big one that I forgot, Dennis, uh, I can't believe it, is unlimited premium data on 5G Get More. That was the plan that really got the most changes here. Uh, if you're interested in the perks, you're going to want to check out the website because there's just so many different perks from Apple Music to Apple Arcade and Google uh, Play Pass. Just check the site to see the different perks across the plans. But the big ones I think you need to know about, unlimited premium on 5G Get More and the hotspot changes and the 50% off the home internet. So, Well, Stetson, the way you're selling this, this all sounds so well yeah. and good, but I think it's really important that we bring in some perspective for comparison's sake. Sure. Let's first start off by comparing this to the current or the former third generation of the mix and match plans, um, just to see some of the key differences here. I mean, I know you talked about the hotspot having a really interesting change, and I'm sure the audience would love yeah. to hear what that is. Yeah, so uh, it's not all unicorns and rainbows, Dennis. We've got some harsh reality news hitting home. Good news, pricing is exactly the same. The bad news, the hotspot, the big asterisk we talked about earlier is that previously on the old plans, when you were connected to 5G ultra wideband, you got truly unlimited high-speed hotspot data. Now on these new plans, your hotspot usage on ultra wideband counts against your high-speed limit. And after you hit your limit, you will be capped at three megabits per second on ultra wideband. Correct. That's a big bummer. Uh, and the second thing, video streaming, instead of defaulting to 4K on ultra wideband, it will now default to 720p. You have to go into your account settings and turn on a toggle to enable 4K streaming. Yeah, but Stetson, I'm not sure I truly appreciate why it's such a big deal. Why is this such a big deal, Stetson? Uh, I think it's, well, you led me up with that. I don't know. Why is it a big deal? Well, guys, what you got to remember is, is that formerly before uh, Verizon got this beautiful C-band, ultra wideband wasn't in very many places so it didn't really matter now back then yeah but with c-band going to be so ubiquitous in 100 million locations and treated just like other ultra wideband was with millimeter wave you effectively ended up getting unlimited hotspot on these plans yeah you could have basically because you would have had uh coverage if it's as good as n41 is like my city's covered i could easily see other cities being fully covered and you would just get truly unlimited high speed hotspot data and now it's uh, it's going to be capped at three megabits per second. So um, let me ask you a question, Stetson. Yeah. With what we know about the new plans, would you upgrade from the third generation? Yeah, my my answer is, well, unfortunately, yes, because you're all automatically going to be upgraded if you're on the Gen 3 plans. Um, look, I think bottom line for me is this. If you're an existing Verizon customer, I think you're going to be happy with these new plans because you're getting some extra perks and you're getting more hotspot data. And if you're on Get More, you're getting truly unlimited pri uh, premium data. I think that's a, it's a good upgrade if you're an existing Verizon customer and you really like the Verizon network and coverage and performance in your area. Do I would you... say if you're a T-Mobile or AT&T customer, there is absolutely zero reason to consider switching to these plans. I think they're expensive. Verizon is one of the more expensive carriers. I think the perks, T-Mobile has way better international options with a free international roaming. Uh, and I think AT&T, they have 4K streaming by default on their Elite plan, which is really great. Yeah, I definitely want to definitely do a comparison between the other carriers offerings. But before we do that, do you really think people on the first gen plans of Verizon, the original get more with 75 gigabytes of premium data should be yeah. switching? Because I personally disagree. Well, I think if you want hotspot, sure. But uh, Dennis, tell me why, why do you think they should stick with their legacy plan? Well, on the legacy plan, I believe they had to pay $10 for an add-on to get access to ultra wideband. But in doing so, they have access to unlimited ultra wideband. And yeah, that'd be the unlimited hotspot data. So the unlimited hotspot, uh, unlimited hotspot data and 75 gigabytes of priority data over the LTE is pretty good. And ultra wideband really doesn't count against that 75 gigabytes of priority. So that's a pretty good option. And also when we were doing the, the first recording earlier, uh, 
I think we found a glitch in the matrix when we were talking about Xfinity Mobile because yeah. you found out glitch? something interesting with your testing, and that was that if you were connected to ultra wideband, you got the full unthrottled speeds with Xfinity. Yep. And of course, normal on device usage also didn't count yep. against your twenty so gigabytes. Was- unlimited truly unlimited full speed hotspot data on xfinity mobile on ultra wideband didn't count against my 20 gig high speed allotment uh and if that continues i would say that plan which is 45 bucks for a single line 30 dollars a month for a family of four uh that is going to be better you're getting truly unlimited hotspot data on 5g ultra wideband and as Dennis mentioned, when C-Band is here, like that should cover way more people and be way more accessible. And it doesn't count against your 20 gig allotment. So like, <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden you can use so much more data on that plan. And uh, yeah. Wow. I'm, I guarantee that wasn't planned, but if that ends up staying true, that is, it's an gonna, accident. Yeah. that's going to end up being the best plan. Now let's talk about comparison because comparison is important compared to current day plans. Um, I was really harsh on the first take, and hopefully I can bring that same energy here again. <laughs> but uh, Rip them, Dennis. Go. But uh, openly saying this, everyone knows I don't like Verizon, and I think these plans are poo-poo. Like, literally, they man- in my opinion, they managed to botch things up. I understand why they're doing this from the long-term aspect of, like, the yeah. fact there's more limited capacity on mid-band. But I think, I think that uh, Verizon would have been better off literally just doing copy-paste on AT&T Elite's offering. So... Unlimited priority, 4K video streaming. I'll take the less hotspot at 40 gigs. I feel like having uncapped video is way more useful for most day-to-day use cases. I think there's a lot of people out there that are like myself that watch lots of media content on their phones. So I think that would have been more valuable than the extra 10 gigs of hotspot in my opinion. Sure. Also worth mentioning is Verizon is the most expensive bar none. T-Mobile includes taxes and fees at 85 from Magenta Max. AT&T leads, AT&T leads $85, but as I like to joke, if you have a heartbeat, you can pretty much get a discount. So Verizon is not looking super attractive. And honestly, if you're with either of the respective carriers that I just mentioned, I honestly wouldn't consider switching. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll fight for Verizon here. I'll give some perspective. I think the mid-tier plans, your play more and your do more. Yes, they're more expensive, but they're offering five times the amount of hotspot data as T-Mobile Magenta. Okay, 25 gigs compared to just five gigs. Uh, and even more than AT&T Extra, which I think is, what is it? Is it 15? Is it, I think it's 15. I thought it was five. Is it also five? I'm not sure. Bestphoneplans.net. I'm going to cut this out. Through the power of editing. 15. Okay, this is Boom. 15. Okay, cool. And AT&T Elite and AT&T Extra has only 15 gigs of high-speed hotspot data. So I think the mid-tier plans are actually looking really good from Verizon. And the Get More plan, yes, it's also the most expensive, but you're getting truly unlimited premium data on the Verizon network, which I feel could actually make a bigger difference because I think you're more likely to notice being deprioritized on Verizon. So I think getting unlimited premium could be bigger. Um, And I will say 50 gigs of hotspot data is the most on any postpaid plan you can get right now. And uh, even though the speeds are reduced to three megabits per second on ultra wideband, that is still five times faster than the 600 kilobits per second you're getting on T-Mobile Magenta, regardless of what you're connected to um, and Magenta Max as well. So that is a very loaded thing full of information. I'm going to try to break this down into parts. First, onto your hotspot comment. I don't think 10 gigabits of extra hotspot is going to save anyone out there. If there's a hotspot power user, they're probably going to buy a dedicated hotspot plan, in my opinion. Also, um, in regards to priority data, I agree with you. Verizon is the most aggressive when it comes to their network management, and priority is important. However, if you're in a truly congested situation like I was experienced when I was going through the airports where they unfortunately did not have ubiquitous millimeter wave access, priority ain't going to save you on that network experience. And the same goes for other carriers, too. I talked about in the previous recording with how I did a Magenta Max test with Mint test at the airport in Pittsburgh, where T-Mobile traditionally suffers, and the performance was typically unusable. Mint got three, Magenta Max got eight. I know you said that was use- acceptable, but I don't think priority made that much of a difference to really save my bacon. And in the case of Verizon, with the highest priority possible on lowest Verizon, I was getting 10 meg um, at the following airport in um, Minneapolis, uh, I believe was the one where it was- Did you super- have a deprioritized plan to check? Remember I told you I had a regular consumer plan. I had a person run a speed test for me beside me. They were on the oh, get yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah. I, I talked to strangers, folks. Big shocker. Yeah. What, um, what did they get? Literally, they were getting like one meg. 
Dude, that's that's literally a huge difference. I was on Enterprise. Uh, I was on Los Verizon, which is essentially like enterprise priority. That's yeah, the difference. I, my understanding, I don't know. They had they had a postpaid consumer plan. They were getting one meg. So, oh. do you get what I'm saying? Because they were saying, I'm saying like their post, their I, consumer. I like they need consum- more information. Like, had they used over 50 gigs in their travels? Like, were they deprioritized? My point was they had a consumer postpaid plan. That postpaid didn't save them until people started leaving and like. There was just more capacity. Like if the tower is really like congested like that. You're kind of like SOL. And then you touched on a bunch of other stuff. I'm not going to lie. I already forgot at this point what you kind of said. But long story short, I don't think these plans are that good. And if you're concerned about hotspot, like really, truly concerned about hotspot, I feel like there are better options out there to get hotspot data to look at. Um, literally, um, I know it's on a different network, but T-Mobile, I think, is still doing, what, 50 bucks for 100 gigs for your dedicated hotspot? Yep. I think so. And I believe AT&T has something comparable on the prepaid side. Uh, yep. So, like, I think those are better options and honestly a lot cheaper if that's really what you really need and you're going to be having much more hotspot data. Like, literally, you could get the AT&T dedicated hotspot and then say our favorite AT&T prepaid plan with the, uh, yeah. what is it, 23 gigs of priority data and then another additional 15 gigs of hotspot on your phone and still basically coming out the same cost of what this one Verizon plan does. Uh yeah, if you on that, you'd be paying a hundred bucks for those. I mean, with tax, this is going to be about a hundred. Yeah, well, you have to add taxes to those. Tax and fees are included on the prepaids, aren't they? No, they're not. No, on cricket they are. Cricket they are. Then we'll go cricket then. Cricket okay. and the hotspot plan. Yeah, it's it'd be very close, is what I would say. I don't but, know. Um, that's not what we originally just saw. Uh, that's not what we originally talked about when we were discussing this, and I can't remember honestly what we said. I wish. That's I wish. okay. Yeah, I wish I had hit the record button on the audio, <laughs> but that's okay. I but, think. Bottom line for me, I think if you're an existing Verizon customer, you're going to be happy with these plans. I think uh, the perks are great. Verizon is doing a huge push on um, their 5G and LTE home internets with the 50% off on pretty much all of the plans. And uh, honestly, Dennis, I think $30 off Fios, that's sick. That's a great deal. Uh, that discount was going on for a while. It just became a very much official. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, and it's, I don't know. to clarify, it's only on the gigabit speed tier. Only on the gigabit. Still, I think that's a that's a pretty solid discount that no other carrier is offering right now. I mean, um, it's it's definitely good, but uh, I mean, is that worth switching to Verizon? Yeah, I don't think there. I don't think these plans are a reason to switch to Verizon. What would have made these plans better for you? What would have been like? A, all right, maybe I'll consider switching to Verizon. What do they need to do for you? Well, you know my answer about me being super antagonistic against Verizon, but let's just assume that I could forgive them for a moment. What are, yeah, these are um, – pretend it's AT&T or something. So like. if I – the things that would make me want to switch to Verizon is if they did, say, 100 gigabytes of hotspot. Yeah. That would be noteworthy. Like, I don't know if – for, I don't know if anybody out there had Sprint before they got bought out, but Sprint used to have a premium plan with 100 gigabytes of hotspot on the consumer side that was phenomenal. And I think that would actually make me sing a little bit of a different tune compared to when they just took away something from us. Yeah, it feels um, bad when people take things away from you. And I know Verizon is able to do because they do it on the enterprise side. In fact, on the business side as well. So I know they could do it there. The 4K video streaming really is huge for me. I know you don't necessarily care about it. You yeah, don't want it too much, I'm, but... Whatever. I'm not watching 4K on my phone. It's not about me watching 4K. The problem is it's a hard video throttle. So, you know, let's just say you're capped at the 480p, right? That's 1.5 yeah. meg. Well, like many of the viewers in my audience, I like to watch podcasts. And, you know, sometimes I like to scrub between different topics. At 1.5 meg, I'm suffering with tons of buffering. And that it just assumes that you're using a service that actually has well-optimization like YouTube. Yeah. Different services like... I know you don't watch a lot of anime, but like Crunchyroll and Funimation just straight up break with these video throttles. Yeah. They just become literally unusable. They're like, it'll actually time out and I can't watch my anime. That's very inconvenient. And I watch a lot, aside from communicating, I watch a lot of mid, uh, video content on my phone. So having uncapped video would be great. Or at the very least, very least, 1080p, 8 megabits per second cap, like old Magenta, like the old Magenta Plus plans. Yeah. At the very least. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I will say that um, to Verizon's credit, that. Uh, it is 40p by default in LTE and 720p default on uh, ultra wideband 5G, which I'm not a big fan of. But you can get it to 720p on LTE, which is a four megabit per second cap, and I think that's plenty fine for video buffering. And uh, when you're on ultra wideband, it'll it'll be 4K once you turn that on. I mean, basically, I, I kind of said this earlier, but if they just would have clicked copy paste on either AT&T Lead or even Magenta Max, just copy paste. I think we'd be singing a different tune, especially if they included taxes and fees. 
Yeah, I think tax for me, tax and fees, I think would have been a really big uh, push in the right direction. But still, man, I don't know, like 5G get more, it's five bucks more expensive, but you're getting 10 gigs more hotspot uh, and you're getting a bunch of extra perks that... I well, know. I said it before, but if there's someone that's out there that's a power user of the hotspot, I don't think the yeah. extra 10 gigs is going to save them. I would love to know, people that are watching, if you are someone that relies on your hotspot frequently, is that 10 gigabits... 10 extra gigabytes of data really going to make the difference for you? Are you leaning more in my camp yeah. where uh, it really doesn't matter at that point? But Stetson, do you want to round this out with good news? Yeah, I think we should uh, round this out with good news. Actually, before I forget, let's put a bow on this. What is the best phone plan's verdict? Do we recommend people switch to this? Do we recommend that people upgrade? I recommend if you're an existing Verizon customer, uh, if you have a legacy plan, maybe evaluate if it, the new plans are a better option for you based on the included perks and features. I think you're likely going to be happy with your legacy plan. I think, honestly, a lot of people will be happy with these plans. You're getting more high-speed hotspot data on LTE, which is what more people are going to be connected to anyway, uh, especially if a slightly older phone, things like that. Um, and even though Verizon is covering 100 million people, still 200 million people plus will be on regular uh, 5G and not getting ultra wideband. So I think the plans are good if you're existing Verizon customer. If you're on T-Mobile or AT&T, I don't think there's a compelling reason to switch here. I think uh, your existing plans are probably gonna be fine. So that's what I got. But I think uh, one thing we mentioned in the previous take that I think is worth bringing back is this could be a good time to consider switching to another option. Like if you wanna keep Verizon's coverage, you could opt for the, the glitch in the matrix we touched about with Xfinity Mobile. You're getting priority data. You're getting unlimited hotspot at full speed on ultra wideband. Um, and it's not actually counting against your usage, which doesn't make sense, but that's a really cheap option. Uh, US Mobile is another great affordable option. Visible will get access to C-band, 25 bucks a month for unlimited data. I still disagree on the Visible recommendation. Dude, they've got a free trial. So try them out and see for yourself. That's what I'll say. Also on the US Mobile topic real quick, um, hotspots not included, right? Yeah, you have to pay extra. I think it's like five bucks for- um, Then with that being said, I think honestly, Xfinity Mobile. Well, that got, is you, the. You also have to have Xfinity Internet. Okay. Okay. Like, fine. Okay. Fine, fine. 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 If that's the case, then honestly, I would recommend looking at something like. Uh, I'm trying to think who was that we reported a few months ago that was like doing uncapped millimeter wave and we didn't know about it. It was like a prepaid carrier. Was it? Right? I think that's that's fixed. It was total wireless. Total wireless. Okay. I was gonna say maybe that would be the glitch. Yeah. That makes it no, I, I think I think those are three good options. Look, look at Xtreme Mobile. Look at US Mobile. Look at Visible. If you want to keep Verizon coverage and substantially lower your monthly bill, um, and yeah, but yeah, that's that's kind of what I got. It's good for existing Verizon customers. Uh, if you're on another plan, I don't think there's a reason to switch to these. Um, and yeah, Dennis, we're ending on good news. All right, good news time. Let's uh, let's let the angels come down from the heavens as I say this, but the FAA finally agrees to not seek further 5G delays for deployment with AT&T Verizon on C-band. Woo! You gotta do your little hot that you did last time. <sighs> there you go. It's amazing. So yeah, January 19th, is the day of reckoning. 100 million people will be covered day one by Verizon in their sweet, sweet, sweet C-band goodness. So if you're in those 50 markets, um, please make sure you enjoy. I know I will on my return trip back to Pittsburgh because Pittsburgh is one of them. Uh, unfortunately, Stetson, this is the one time where I have a leg up on you. Oh, man. But uh, with that being said, guys, make sure you leave a like on this video. Make sure you subscribe. We're on a mission to get past 1,000 subscribers. Also, make sure you become a member of the Patreon if you're not already so you can see extra content. As you can see, we're live from the beautiful couch and uh, the I'll best show film, you the setup. We'll best Phone Plans made. HQ. Yeah, we'll show you how this video was made. And, and uh, um, make sure you're subscribing. Share this video with one friend if you enjoyed it and to let them know uh, if they should upgrade to Verizon's new plans. But either way, that's going to be it. I'm Stetson. And I'm Dennis. And we look forward to talking to you in the next episode. Peace. Peace.